So you're here because you discovered Chia, you want to start plotting, but don't know 100% how to optimize your computer to, to efficiently plot. So this video is going to be a basic guide to teach you a little bit more about that, help you understand your PC's plotting potential, where bottlenecks might be, and how to avoid them. So before we get into that, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Austin, and if you haven't been here before, welcome. This is the Chia Collective, the channel for all things Chia. Like you, you know, I found Chia to be a super immensely satisfying project, and what I wanted to do was make some videos to basically share my knowledge and the knowledge I've accumulated along the way. I plan on releasing a lot of videos that are tailored toward just all things Chia, like plotting, how to make your plotter, you know, more efficient, how to actually work in the command line, how to set up automated plotting, all that sort of stuff. So if you find these things interesting or you think they're gonna be helpful, do me a huge, huge favor and please click that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Also inspires me um, to know that you guys enjoy the content that's coming out and inspires me to keep making these videos. So with that, let's jump right into it. All right, so here we are, uh, understanding system requirements. So. Let's just dive into it. The reason why I wanted to make this video specifically is because when I'm on Reddit and I'm on Keybase, I see a lot of people ask a very similar question where either they are planning on building a computer or they already have a computer and they're just like, you know, I have this computer, I have like with these parts, what can I do? How, how much can I plot? Or I want to be plotting this. What can I do with it? Like, how do I get there? And I think a lot of people ask this question because they don't really understand the full plotting process. And I wanted to make this video to kind of teach you guys to like what's involved, what kind of ratios you need to make so that you can better understand like where there are bottlenecks. And it's actually pretty straightforward. It's not very complex. So once you pick this up, it's I think it's really easy. It's super helpful. And you know, you can help your friends or anyone else that you know going forward. So jumping right into it, all right, so let's just talk about plotting basics really quickly. You know, if you're watching this video, you probably have a better, a good sense of um, how plotting works. If you don't, think of plotting as like a printer that is printing out your lottery tickets, which are your plots, right? And the way the proof of space system works is the network has a bunch of space drives that are essentially like a library of lottery tickets and to approve a block and to validate it it's like picking one of those lottery tickets and so obviously if your lottery tickets picked you win plotting is the process of printing out those lottery tickets and then you store those lottery tickets somewhere across you know the entire net space and that's what they mean by that so with plotting obviously you have like a printing machine right and there are different ways to essentially, you know, each printer, like different printers, some print faster than others. Um, and so there are different specs and things that go into that printer to make it more efficient. And in this case, you know, it's, it's your PC and the certain kind of components that are already part of it. And so to jump right into that, you know, we really have four main, really technically three, I, I, I'd like to think. The fourth one, you know, the storage drive here, that's, that's a permanent solution, that's just having space. So there's only so much you can do with that. Um, but everything else is super key and critical to being able to plot efficiently and understanding where your bottlenecks are is, uh, is, is really key to maximizing your computer. And so obviously, you know, you have your CPU, your RAM, your plotting drive, which most people recommend do an NVMe or an SSD of some sort because it's much faster when it comes to reading and writing. Um, those are the kind of key pieces that you want. And I like to think of this, um, it's kind of like a puzzle. It's actually kind of fun in, in a certain way, but you know, what you want to do is it, you really want to start from your baseline and it's like finding the common denominator. Um, I like to think about it from kind of this perspective, right? So like, you know, I, I did an example here. Um, it's very quick, very simple. And this is obviously for like the kind of basic plotter and you're, you're just getting started and you wanna know what you wanna do here, right? And so with plotting, right, you each plot, when you start plotting, a K32, for example, which is what you're probably going to plot unless there's really no need to do K33 right now, uh, but that's like your plot size. A K32, in order to plot it, there's basically a requirement of two threads. Um, you need, I think it's like 3300 
eight, I want to say 3,390 megabytes of RAM. So like three, I, I round up to like 3.4 gigs. Um, and then you have a plugin drive that's supposed to take about 256 gigs. But in reality, I've seen it go a little bit higher than that. And I like to buffer about 280 gigs. Um, so the way I like to think about it is, you know, if you have a PC or if you're planning on building one, I like to start off with your processor because that is going to be something that's not really easily replaceable. Um, it really kind of sets the groundwork for you in terms of what you can or cannot do. And it's obviously, I think it's a little bit harder to make those changes and upgrade that versus adding more SSDs or something. Um, so if you look at your processor nowadays, modern processors, CPUs, they have multiple cores. Um, some have four. Nowadays we're seeing six, eight, 12, 16. And then if you're starting to get into like crazy land and getting really expensive CPUs, you're going to start to see like the 24s, the 32s, etc. cetera. Uh, but that's where I want you to start. I think if you think about it from there and use that as your baseline, it's, it's much easier to understand. So take your CPU. For example, if you have a eight core Ryzen, then you have eight cores, right? And with those cores, each core has two threads. So if you have an eight core processor, you have 16 threads, okay? And so if you want to eke out 100% of your CPU's power toward plotting, right? You could handle 16 threads at once. If each plot is taking you, let's say two threads, you can change it to four, we can talk about that stuff and kind of changing threads and tinkering with your settings in another video. Uh, but for basics, let's just assume two, right? You could plot, basically each core will be plotting for you. That's why I have one core per plot here. You can basically do eight parallel plots, assuming that everything else is met, but let's start there. So if you have an eight core processor and you want to plot all, utilize all eight, what you'll need is you'll need at least enough RAM to cover that. And so what is 3,400 times eight? I can't do math right now. So let's bring up a little calculator here. 3,400 times eight, right? So you're gonna need 27 gigs of RAM there. So then obviously what you want, and you wanna leave a little bit of space there. So, right, 32 gigs would be ideal, right? And then for your SSD, right, if you're taking about 280 gigabytes of temporary space and you need to fill that, you're gonna need an SSD that can hold at least 2.24 terabytes, either one or two or a combination, um, which is what I have here. And so hopefully that made sense. Um, it should have been pretty straightforward in the sense that like one, one core, two threads, 3.4 gigs of RAM, and then 280 gigs of SSD space. And if you know how many cores your processor has, you can use that ratio right there to help you figure out what parts you need. So let's say, yeah, let's say I had a eight core processor, but then I had 16 gigs of RAM and like one terabyte of SSD space. You can plot with that and that would work fine. But then obviously, you know, you would know that your RAM and your SSD are now your bottleneck. And so if you really wanted to maximize it and kind of push further, you'd have to find a way to invest in uh, more RAM and, you know, more, more SSD space. But knowing this now, hopefully that helps you understand where you need to go. So I'm gonna reiterate this one more time because I want you guys to really understand this and uh, get it locked in your head. We're gonna make a nice little chart here, really the, the ratio, all right? So let's take this, delete that. Let's insert a nice little table here. Uh, we need three, maybe four, boom. Beautiful little table. All right, so we have your CPU your RAM and your SSD space. And obviously this is a super simple multiplication um, when we get there, but let's just talk about it, right? So for one plot, oh my God, let's get this font working, come on. So one plot, it's gonna take one core, AKA really, it really, it's not really one core, it's really two threads. Um, that's, 
a key distinguisher because sometimes, yeah, you can have, I mean, sometimes maybe two cores will be using one of each thread, etc. Uh, depends on how the CPU is working, how you're plotting, you know, how many cores are available, etc. etc. It's really threads you want to think about, but you can assume that in most processors today, one core equals two threads and you're going to need 3.4 gigs of RAM and 280 gigs of hard drive space. And that is it. That is the magic ratio, because if you want to now add another plot, you're going to have to have another core or two more threads, 3.4 gigs of RAM, 280 gigs of SSD space. And it kind of goes on and on. Um, so hopefully that's really helpful because now you should be able to figure out by looking at your own PC, where is my bottleneck? Um, just look at the parts, look at what's assembled, like what, what things you have, and then go ahead and figure out where your limitations are gonna be. And then if you need to, or you want to rather, um, and you're, you, know, you have some skin in this game and you wanna keep plotting, go ahead and, and make that investment. All right, so that is really it for this video. I didn't want to make this too long or go way deep into the science of it. This is really for you, if you're just starting off and you want to figure out what you need, hopefully this video was a helpful guide to getting you there. So with that, if you found this video helpful or if you didn't find it helpful, leave a note in the comment. Let me know, you know what I'm missing. Um, if there's something else that you want to understand, I'd definitely appreciate any feedback that you guys have for me. And once again, if, if you did, if it is helpful and if you're interested in stuff like this, if you want to get to know plotting a little bit better, how to become you know more advanced, how to get into that command line and start being real fancy, uh, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm going to start releasing a lot of videos on how to get you up to speed. Um, the state of Chia as it is right now, all things Chia, because you know, this is the Chia Collective. So with that, have a good evening, guys. See you in the next video.